Hello everyone and welcome back to the English Shooting live stream. Apologies it's not the usual half, usual half seven on a Thursday but I suppose I got the time right and not necessarily uh, the day but I guess sometimes it's always a little bit well, it's better to mix things up and try different days. I know some people can't watch the stream live because of work so hopefully you're sat at home with a beer now and able to tune in so for all you regulars out there you know what the deal is it's a general stream that we're going to cover all the past week's shooting news and topics along with much much more for anybody new welcome to english shooting this is all about shooting predominantly in the uk although we don't necessarily cap it directly to that but please do get involved there is a chat box you can use that propose questions ask questions if you want to learn more about our laws you want to get into shooting or really anything you want to bring up any topics you want to discuss we're pretty much open to anything on this channel and of course don't forget to hit that like button it really does make a difference in reaching new people beating the algorithm and hopefully getting as many people into this wonderful sport as possible but I hope you've all had a fantastic week or maybe a week and a half since the last stream the weather has had a interesting turn we had a week of beautiful sunshine and now it's sunny one minute snow and rain and gales but I guess that's what you get for living in the UK hopefully next week onwards weather will be slightly better although with the traveling arrangements that we have planned there's going to be I think an interesting mix of climates and also uh, topology so of course yes we're going to be talking finally about the US trip we are flying out next week it's finally here after many years of delays now thanks to that nasty little virus but it's not all going to be about the American trip we're going to be touching on the 1522 probably will make this a full video at some point but just more issues developing and sort of more quality decline that I've been seeing most recently brought up by range 22 so we'll be referring to uh, his quite informative video uh, later on some brilliant news in the firearms licensing world Hampshire has reopened we're gonna be talking a little bit about that they seem to be one of the latest to reopen and in terms of the service level that we're gonna see that's gonna be very very interesting going forward of course been a little bit of a busy boy because the weekend just gone I was actually out in Northern Ireland again shooting handguns I know it's a tough life but someone's got to do it I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and how I got my ass absolutely handed to me uh, by an action air shooter for those of you that don't think that action air is a real sport or has any connection to four ball handgun you really couldn't be more wrong uh, and some maybe slightly less good news uh, revocation numbers the actual statistics have come in now from Devon and Cornwall thanks to freedom of information requests that Basque have put in and the well the numbers are well, I think quite predictable and well they're record high so we're going to be talking a little bit about that but the positive exciting news now of course we've still got to be able to get out to the country first and with all the various different restrictions and things you've got to do it's an absolute bloody minefield so I'm still holding my breath um no I'm not holding my breath just a little bit although it should be fairly easy to be able to get to the other side for those of you that have maybe recently started watching the channel or this is the first video that you're watching for the past few years well I think the first one went to was I think five years ago um, I go on pretty much annual trips out to America with a company called American Shooting Trips. It's basically a package holiday for shooting. They rent a range for the week, there are guns provided, and you get to do all sorts of shooting from just general plinking to full-on matches. And because of the travel restrictions over the past few years, this trip has been delayed and delayed and delayed again but next week we are finally going to be heading out there and I finally have some more definite plans. There are still things in the works. We still got uh, probably, well, there's a, a good three or four days where we've, we've got some opening in terms of availability. 
and we will be trying to fill that with as much interesting stuff uh, as possible. So I can now sort of reveal what uh, is going to be going on. Uh, this is all going to be in the build up to the week that we're going to spend in Kentucky. So we're actually out for a total of 19 days and it's going to end with a whole week in Kentucky. Never been to that range, but should be very similar to what you've seen before uh, in Utah. So we're going to be flying out to uh, Chicago. And, and of course, I do want to just put out there, I've had a lot of really generous generous offers over the past couple of years with people saying, right, if you're passing nearby, then, you know, please let me know. And, and there's seriously, there's some people that have really rolled out the red carpet and have said like, yes, we've got all of these full autos. Would you like to come and see them? So, you know, if I'm, if I, say any names or states or whatever and you're like ah oh, that's down the road from me and you want to meet up any american viewers or subscribers please do let me know i want to try and meet as many people out there um, as possible and selfishly shoot as much as possible and have as much fun uh, as possible um, so bringing up the trusty google maps we are going to be flying into uh, chicago uh, the first stop is this is sort of a last minute addition uh, but something that as a bit of a speed freak and uh, sort of car enthusiast, we're actually going to be heading down. Our first stop coming into um, America is going to be Indianapolis. So we're going to drive down from Chicago into Indianapolis. Um, I believe that's going to be on the Thursday. Next Thursday, we're going to be uh, out there. <clears throat> And then from there on the Friday, of course, there's going to be a lot of traveling going on in between. We're actually going to be heading up to um, uh, Minnesota. Um, I think it's in the uh, Minneapolis region. I'm not going to say who we're meeting at these locations. They're not. Some of these people may not want to be publicized. There's a bit of also business going on with, with Magload. So... There's going to be a lot that's going to be shown, but I'm going to try to show as much as possible. We'll obviously have to respect people's uh, privacy. So um, Mini um, Minneapolis or Minnesota on the Friday. Um, and then the next sort of hard booking, I think it's either Dallas or Austin, but Texas uh, on the Wednesday, the next Wednesday. So we've got a good four, five days, certainly the weekend to make our way down. We're hoping to be able to stop off in um, either Kansas or Missouri, depending on which side we take, um, and then potentially Oklahoma or Arkansas on our way down to Texas. Now, I've always said with my previous visits to Utah, uh, how abundant the shooting is out there and actually statistically speaking they are like the gun state capital of america but obviously texans do like their guns they like their shooting and i've only briefly stayed in texas due to a flight transfer i've never actually got out and about lots of places and lots of sites that i'm really looking forward to going and seeing for myself and experiencing you know sort of texas full on so i'm sure there's going to be a lot of shooting lots of range visits lots of gun shop visits that's another thing during those days during those travel days if we see an interesting gun shop or anything interesting gun related we are most definitely going to stop pull over and you know whether it's going to be half an hour or three hours or whatever spend some time sort of really taking it uh, in the the next hard stop so this is going to be a week friday we're going to be he heading all across to birmingham alabama uh, for a meet with and i know these guys are completely happy for me to um, shout them out um it's callaway ballistics a uh, ammunition manufacturer uh, they're going to be taking us out to the range. I know uh, they were probably watching. There is somebody else who's uh, also invited us for, for a range day, which I'm going to try and fit in, but I'm in communication. You know who you are if you are watching. Uh, but yeah, they've said uh, G18s, MP5s, all sorts of fun and tasty full autos. Then from Birmingham, we are going to be heading up um, to the final destination in Kentucky. Uh, it's just outside. Apparently, there's like 15 different pronunciations for this. Um, I mean, I would say Louisville, um, but yeah, it's just outside Louisville or however the the correct pronunciation is. And then we're going to be spending a week in Kentucky um, doing all sorts of shooting. So it's going to be a bit full on. Um, it's going to be a lot of driving, a lot of traveling, and it, the, hopefully we haven't 
sort of cut ourselves too thin or or stretch ourselves too thinly uh, to be able to really enjoy and take things in. But, you know, if we go and shoot, say, a full auto in every range we pass that has full autos, well, you know, what, it's like 30 seconds to put down, well, not even that, few seconds to put a mag down range. If we do that at every gun, every gun shop or range that we drive past, I'll, I'll be more than happy. Uh, so, yeah, there's going to be a, a huge amount of content. I would like to try and daily vlog while we're out there during the sort of week and a half prior to the week in Kentucky that might be a little bit difficult because there may be some days that we we're not really up to much it might be a heavy travel day or whoever we're meeting or what we're doing might not be able to be filmed so there will be content coming out during that week and a half uh, but that I might even save till after the main trip but Kentucky I'm definitely going to try it and daily vlog like I've done uh, previously going through you know um, familiarization again with full bore handguns and semi-automatic full bore rifles of course having a couple of trips at NHTSA recently has is a little bit cheating and maybe I'm a little bit more up to speed than I would usually be going out to the states with uh, with a handgun so yeah you're going to see all of that all of the matches where we end up visiting I'm really nervous that it might turn into a bit of a fl food vlog because uh, obviously I'm going out with, with Connors, um, Dan, um, Mr. Crap Magnet himself is also traveling with us and um, Arius from Outdoor Technica uh, or Mochaccino, whichever name you want to go by. And we are going to be stopping off at a lot of barbecue places, a lot of meat places and as many buffalo wild wings as we can cram in uh, much probably to the loathe of um, the rest of the people but I'm an absolute wing fiend and buffalo wild wings is like absolute heaven for me uh, so yeah I'm going to try not make it too food heavy and try and keep it on the uh, shooting side uh, but yeah should be a lot of interesting sites interesting things and probably a lot of interesting toys that we're not even allowed to look at here in uh, the UK so very much looking forward to it and whilst I don't think there are any spaces and it's probably be a little bit uh, late to uh, book onto the trips if what you see over the next few weeks entices you or you are in any way tempted to uh, join for a next one then you can head over to American Shooting Trips Dot com there's loads of packages and um, dates already available uh, so october the 3rd 2022 this year that's very much got space available and i do have a pre-prepared video some of you might have seen this before let's turn the music off there um this isn't the range we're going out to but if you want to go out to this specific range the, the if you've seen the videos before and you want to give it a go yourself the october trip will be uh, utah uh, and this is the place that you'll be going although it's actually yeah and you know you get to kick doors open and have a go with an AK like why wouldn't you want to go out there uh, but uh, yeah the Utah range has actually significantly changed so that's going to be interesting to see you know what they've done and how they've in, improved things but the Kentucky yeah I'm going in blind I've been told a little bit about it previously uh, but yeah I've not been there myself and yeah, it's going to be a good a good trip overall. Lots to cram in, lots to see, and lots to do. But that should hopefully lead to very good um, content for you guys and some some interesting videos. It really is just I'm not going to say an absolute free for all. A lot of people say you know may, maybe give the impression that America is a bit wild wild west. I'm sure in some places it is. There are still rules. You still got to be safe and all that. But what you're allowed to do out there and what people are comfortable with you going and doing out there um, is a lot freer than it is uh, within the UK. And they're, uh, they're almost too encouraging at some points. Um, certainly when you start giving large amounts of... Uh, I mean, like, what range would you be able to, you know, do a, a stage like that out of a car? Like, could you imagine that at Bisley? You'd, like, at least 15 people would have heart attacks or an aneurysm. But... Yeah, when you bring out the um, the the Tannerite, it's not what the fuck do you think you're doing? It's uh, cool, you know. Um, and the price is still exactly the same. I still believe the the whole shooting package is is nine nine five, and that is everything excluding accommodation and travel. So that's all your ammunition for the week, all the gun rental, the um, you need some equipment yourself, but there is stuff for you to be able to borrow as well, um, and also range fees and and things like that. So, yeah. It's been, I think this has now been two or three years in the making. Um, and 
just hoping that it lives up to the hype. I mean, America is like a second home for me. I just feel, I feel like I was born in the wrong country. Not just for the guns, just the the culture and and everything. Like I absolutely love going out there. So it's just going to be nice to go back and, um, you know, go out into the states again. Uh, and of course, then get to shoot a load of stuff that we don't ordinarily get to uh, shoot here. So if there are is anything although there's going to be a lot of potential across the whole of the us for potential requests but if there is anything specifically you would like to see um or you would like me to do a video that we can do out in the us that we potentially couldn't do here in the uk then let me know you can ping me an email ping a message use the chat section um below and I'll, I'll try and do it again it gives a lot more freedom while you're out there uh, and on the note of uh, America and not to bring up necessarily a particularly bad memory or experience um, but with the sort of places that we're going to be video uh, we're going to be visiting with the sort of topology uh, that we're going to see and and the ranges and just the vastness sometimes to get some of the footage um, finally bit the bullet and I got another drone some and I say another drone some of you long-term followers will know what happened to the last drone and it was unfortunately the last American shooting trips trip that I went out um, that it sort of bit the dust I repaired it it was just never the same and I completely um, I completely lost faith like drone flying you want to make sure that you're in full control of the drone at all times and even with the repair it would lose signal it would make sort of its own course corrections which is you really don't want um so this actually i managed I, it arrived today left it right until the last minute but luckily um uh, they had next day delivery but absolutely blown away i don't want to turn this into a tech review although i am a bit of a techie but i picked up the uh, dgi um maverick mini 2 that look, look like if you guys i used to have well i still do have the phantom 3 like the size comparison is just absolutely incredible obviously it all folds out that's in its compact form um and you know, i got the full kit bag as well but like the control is bigger than the drone for crying out loud uh so yeah the hopefully going to get some different footage it's it's been a long time since there's been sort of drone footage on the channel and and certainly going to make the most of it out in the states but also uh, for match footage of course i try and film as many matches as possible and just general shooting drones always allow you to be able to get just different angles and perspective perspectives that you just can't get with any other equipment um but for anyone wondering what happened to the uh, last drone i'll give a little bit of a forerunner to it um a little bit windy someone said uh, uh, you know granted a qualified pilot said i don't think you should take it off there um and i was like look i've taken off in worse um i'm completely cool with with doing this and it just sort of got in my head so i sort of freaked myself out ended up full power but in the sort of confusion and being a bit bugged out by everyone saying you should really go for it if you're going to take it off uh, i put both joysticks forward which meant i was going full power full forward around some stage furniture uh, so yes, I was in control of the drone. Well, was I in control? But it was it was me at the controls. But I still protest. If people have just let me to get on with what I was getting on with, I would have taken off without incident. Um, so this is uh, this is the demise of the previous uh, drone. Full forward, full power. Clip the stage furniture, um, and then quite a, a violent um, shaking on on the floor. Uh, yeah. That's uh, so I ended up breaking one of the uh, what is it? It's the motor. One of the motors came out, ended up getting an oh, yeah, the motor it like stripped wire um, and it was absolutely buggered. But I managed to get a new motor, props to DJI, really cheap replacement parts. So I, I wonder why, because so many people do that. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping this drone doesn't have the oh no, I didn't move it over. There we go. That's what I've been talking about. Um, <laughs> so i i had it playing on my screen but not uh, not you guys screen so this is this is what happened to the uh, previous drone uh, full forward full power clip the barrier on the floor little bit of a shake uh yeah so a motor broke off replace that it technically is functionally fine um but again just lost complete uh faith from the uh from flying it you d again i don't want to be 
sort of flying and neutered drone. Uh, but yeah, incredibly impressed. I mean, you know, basic sort of electronics or engineering. Um, people will know about Moore's law. Uh, you know, every two years something gets twice um, twice as powerful or, tw or and half the cost. Uh, I mean, this this Mini Two is like. The, the feature set on it, the capability is far beyond that of the Phantom 3. It's in a much smaller package. Um, and I believe it was even the full kit, it was cheaper than the Phantom 3. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what footage I can get uh, with that. I just couldn't go on this sort of mammoth trip and, and not not get some drone footage because there's definitely going to be some stuff that otherwise I, I would miss. Um, uh, Callum, um, few trip spaces for April and October. Is that April this year? <laughs> like, as in, well, I suppose actually April is the the actual trip starts in like two weeks' time. So there could be time if you want to come out. I don't know. If you're interested, get in touch with American Shooting Trips um, and they'll be able to sort you out and tell you what you can and can't, um, what you can't do. Uh, Wonderloaf. Uh, Glocks are the worst gun ever. Uh, funny you should say that because I believe I have a, on good authority the Glock I'm going to be sh the Glock gave that one away. The gun I'm going to be shooting um, during the week in Kentucky uh, is going to be a Glock. Um, doesn't phase me at all. I like the Glock platform, polymer, no safety, brilliant. Uh, so yeah, be interesting to see. I actually haven't shot a Glock for quite a long time, so it will be interesting to see how I how I go on with that. Uh, but I usually, you know, don't don't embarrass myself. At least that's always the the main aim. M. Grave Gabriel Freedom, absolutely, Scotsman. We need some of that freedom in the UK, especially Scotland. Yeah, um, uh, right to your MP. Uh, M. Gabriel, you missed the world's hugest gun show at um, Toulouse, to Toulouse this weekend. Well, yeah, again, if there's any, if there's anything going on while we're out in the states um, that you think we should go and hit up, then you know, please, please do let me know. And it's a real shame because when this trip was planned, like two or three years ago, it happened to coincide with the Kentucky uh, machine gun night shoot unfortunately they don't do that at knob creek anymore so that was a real bummer um you know that would have made it even more special having to go on to one of the the very last ones uh but yeah we won't we won't get a chance uh, in terms of i think grail guns m top of the list for me is uh, a glock 18 C can't beat a glock uh especially a, a g18 you know I've, I've been fairly lucky to shoot a good selection of full auto uh, in the past i think Prior to the G18, the the Holy Grail for me would have been the MP5. Um, managed to shoot a, a couple of those uh, over my time, but yeah, the G18 has eluded me so far. So we're gonna hopefully. There's been a couple of people that have said that they've got them that we're gonna go and meet up with. So yeah, there will be a, a video on that. Fingers crossed. And and any other, anything else for auto, if it's got that fun sh switch and we're allowed to shoot it, we will 100% shoot it. Uh, evil closet monkey what no trip over to san antonio um potentially again the, you know what i've said in terms of where we're going those are sort of the hard um hard locations that we are going to but we have a fair amount of flexibility of how we navigate to those places and and what we do in between those meetings so we there's there's a good chance well at the moment you know there's a fair amount of open space in what we're doing so who knows where we're going to end up uh, alabama just adopted constitutional carry not effect yet not in effect that yet though um not gonna make a huge different amount of difference to us uh but yeah it's interesting to see there's a real seems to be a real surge at the moment of states sort of opening up gun laws and de-restricting certainly um carry and and all of that so yeah, it's, it seems positive out there for the moment. Uh, William Tell, I've got a Maverick Pro 2 and a Mini 2. They are both excellent. I prefer the Pro 2, but the Mini is just awesome for the size. Uh, my my uh, buying 
technique was what's the cheapest one they make <laughs> because the thing is they're so they're so packed full of features now um and yes i know you know something what is it the inspire um yeah you go and spend two or three thousand pound on a drone you're gonna get two or three thousand pounds worth uh but for me you know it was it was in it was between the se uh, and the mini 2 and yeah the mini 2 package was like 200 quid more but 4k more features longer range uh, it just seemed more than worth it for that extra uh, extra money but i didn't want to get something fancy at the end of the day the last drone i had i crashed and killed so don't want to go out and spend a huge amount of um, money on a drone especially given that we're just about to go out to the us and the last one died in the us so yeah it should be more than good enough for the sort of fishes that i want to get at the end of the day the again the phantom i think the phantom was 1080 Maybe it was 4K, uh, but the camera's a hell of a lot better in the um, uh, in the Mini 2. Uh, spaces this April are available at American Shooting Trips. So um, just to quickly cover on that, if you are interested in joining, so there is still time to actually join us out, not on the massive circus that we're doing, but if you want to join us out in Kentucky, uh, you can, if, if you're quick, uh, um, there's going to be two weeks in total uh, they're going from uh, the first week is going to be there's two uh, April 18th so the first week starts April 18th the second week starts April uh, 25th so you can go out for the two weeks you can go out for the the week of the 18th or the week of the 25th completely up to you um, and David who runs the the trips as you've probably just seen in the chat box uh, saying there are spaces available so if you do want to come out and have an absolutely awesome week or two weeks um, then please get in contact with American Shooting Trips uh, Nexus of Ice um, well that, that serves you right for turning up late you would know if you were here at the start you would know that we were heading out to the u.s uh yes we are we're going out to the states we're going to be out in the states next week um and we are going to be hitting up texas uh 100 there we have a meeting book down in there and yeah it's been a state that's been on my sort of hit list for a long time to go out and explore certainly on the gun side so yeah we're going to be we're, we're going to be heading out to texas So again, I said I'm not going to make it entirely about um, this trip. You're going to be seeing enough. Uh, I, I would strongly recommend, whilst I, I may not for the first couple of weeks be getting a huge amount of content out, I'm going to be filming a hell of a lot. So we'll see how that tricker was out over the next few weeks or, or even months. Uh, but I would highly recommend going and following English Shooting on Facebook. So go and like the page. Um, just type English Shooting in um uh, in Facebook there is a page and a group I I would say follow the page because that's where I tend to put most of the sort of update stuff I'm going to be snapping photos left right and center of, of what we get up to and what we do in little shorts and little videos um, and also Instagram uh, I'm I don't do near enough um, uh, as much as I should on Instagram uh, but I'm going to try and do as many stories and little snippets on there you know this weekend this this couple of weeks coming up whilst there is again some business element definitely going to take the opportunity and, and produce as much content on as ma many platforms as possible so you can go and follow us uh, i think the at of the english shooting on facebook is at english shooting uk some bastard already got at english shooting um and i think it's the same for the instagram so yeah go and check out the instagram account and go and check out the facebook page and you'll see sort of live blow by blow updates of this trip uh, on there uh, but yes as i said not gonna mm, if, if you do have any other questions i can come back to them uh, but we'll get into maybe a little bit of a a, a normal uh, live stream and we'll get straight into the 1522 now by my, no means should this put somebody off buying a 1522 or using one they are still fantastic guns I can't recommend them enough certainly at the price point they are I think impossible to be at the price point uh, they're still incredibly reliable guns 
and will see most people through even the highest level of sort of IPSC mini rifle competition with maybe a few magload mods. But there have been, a, there's, I've mentioned it before and I made this video uh, recently about the uh, the feed lips. So there is sort of a known death issue uh, with the magazine, which is when they die, uh, you end up getting this, um, this sort of sky high. I'll see if I can just skip to it. Um, so, you know, if you've ever killed a mag in a 1522, you would have seen the sky high round. And that basically means that the, the magazine is, is done. The feed lips where they are polymer, they will wear. Um, and then they end up not gripping the round uh, tightly. So you can see there just a light bit of pressure ends up putting them sky high. Now, this isn't necessarily a decline in quality. This is you know, when you put thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through a polymer mag, they will eventually wear out. The other failure for the magazines itself are for them to split. What I'm talking about specifically, and I'm going to sort of pinch this video quickly um, <laughs> for a little bit, uh, is uh, Range 23's uh, video talking about the quality of the mags and the drifting um tolerance and specifically binding followers and you can actually you can see there it's sticking and binding and i think he has another mag where he actually gets it to stop completely on it they uh was that it um and we've seen it's not just the mags either yeah so i think he gets it to completely stop that is going to start causing malfunctions that is going to cause reliability uh, issues i'm sure after a um you know a few mags maybe even get it out and you know polish it up or lube it up whichever is your preference uh, you probably will be able to um, to get it going but something also that i've noticed i know this isn't particularly you know zooming in like this is the logo the decline in logo now you might think well what the fuck does a logo have to do with reliability and the quality of the gun but the if you look at a modern 1522 magazine and compare it to one that you might have had you know five six maybe even eight years ago uh, i think the oldest one i have is like eight years old you compare it to a modern one and the detail in this logo is drastically de uh, different there's also a lot of flashing and a lot of like excess plastic around the logo as well as the quality and maybe definition being significantly lower and i've said this uh, before about the 1522 but it's the molds they seem to be absolutely wringing the neck of the molds of these certainly the magazines and we also think the guns now what happens with injection molded of course the magazines are polymer the guns are polymer even though it's in a, a metal mold injection molding if a real noddy um, quick introduction to injection molding is you have two molds that split right and this is why if you look at i'm trying to think if i've got any plastic things to show you um, but usually if you see injection molded stuff, it will have a line on it somewhere and that's where the two molds have met. But the two molds come in and really hot molten plastic gets squirted in at high pressure and it fills the cavity of the mold. Um, it then quickly cools and then the mold comes apart, dropping out the part. Now, whilst these are metal molds with certainly stuff like glass filled or you know glass filled plastics and nylons, the plastic will over time and you think how many magazines or even 1522 rifles have been made and you know probably there's four if not you know five magazines per rifle out there think the sort of where the thousands tens if not hundreds of thousands of, of cycles those tools have seen and this wears down the mold which blows out the tolerances so you know if the mold wears then the tolerances or the dimensions of the uh, product that you're making start to change and the first thing we started to th see uh, actually a couple of years ago now was sticky mags so usually certainly when I got my first 1022 1522 um, the mags would drop free no problem at all and now it's routine that somebody that brings a brand new gun to us to have upgrade components or fettling, uh, we will sand the inside of the magwell. Now, again, this is something that just over general use, 
uh, and sort of bedding in, it will sort of sort itself out. Uh, but if you're going to take that gun straight away into competition, you want it to work straight away and you don't want any of these sort of bedding issues. So there's a lot more, I think, self-refining that you have to do to the 1522. And it is a real shame because the the apps Smith & Wesson had have hit the nail on the head with this gun. Whilst in the UK, I think it's probably not the market they ever expected. I think they very much burst the gun be it to be a plinker maybe even across trainer and you know training platform but in the UK it's 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 a competition gun it can be a competition gun people use them for gallery some people use them for for pest control and vermin control as well as a little bit of plinking or or even some other target sport so yeah people are probably overusing these guns but six, eight years ago, they were absolutely fine. We didn't have any of these uh, issues, or, or certainly I wasn't made aware of them. And just more and more and more often, there seems to be issues with the, the quality and, and QC uh, of these products. So maybe something to be uh, aware of if you're looking at it. I think I said more recently that we noticed that maybe even the, the feedlets themselves are coming out not only thinner, but there, there definitely seems to be potentially a, a change in the material that they're using they see it seems to be softer um and we gave the example of you know in testing the um ar2 the ar1522 magazine uh, from magload which is coming in may we left a full magazine we left a magazine full over a weekend uh, and we happened to have a couple of rounds in a 1522 magazine by the time we came back even only having two or three rounds in that magazine it had indented the feed lips um showing wear straight away and we've certainly noticed that the the magazines themselves are not lasting anywhere near the same length that you know they were you know six eight years ago i've said before i still have working original magazines from when i bought that 1522 and yeah, some of these new mags they don't even seem to last a, a year's or a year's worth of shooting now so yeah something to be mindful of um i still highly recommend the 1522 but you may need a bit of fettling you may need a bit of um fine tuning before you can really go out and and enjoy that gun but in terms of everything else still super reliable still a, a superb value for money so it's still up there uh, on my sort of top five which reminds me i probably need to redo that video but yes there's there's still a lot of life left in the 1522 but just be mindful of its uh slightly decline in quality um happy i had a brand new um 1522 mag with completely crisp logo so they seem to have replaced some molds um and thank you for um bringing that up because i actually left a comment on uh, range 23's uh, video sort of saying my experience with them and he came back and actually said the same thing there seems to be uh well it it really does depend like your automatic assumption is that they finally replace the molds and now we've got new crisp fine magazines but again because these things are made these things are made in tens if not hundreds of thousands of quantities um maybe an older batch has been discovered uh so you know there's multiple uh companies um, and people bringing in these mags into the uk so you know what's to say that there's been a gun shop somewhere in in the middle of nowhere in america that has been sat on hundreds of these magazines for the last five years someone's found them um made them an offer and then brought them in so is it a batch of really old crisp mags that we're seeing or have they changed the tool so it will be interesting to see you know if it is a new mold if uh if they have changed it if they are have improved it again it will be interesting to see give it six months a year maybe even two years for the older magazines to die um, and then the new ones to come in and, and see if we see the uh, higher quality crisp mags once again so it'll be interesting um, to, to see that going forward uh, Timmy Guns uh, bringing out the con controversial subjects today um, how do shooters in the UK view recreational marijuana use outside of shooting activities 
older folk here in the States seem to regard it poorly, but most young shooters I've met enjoy both, I'm sure they do. Uh, so not really a topic, you know, bearing in mind that um, marijuana is most definitely illegal here within the UK. I'm, I'm not going to get get onto that exact conversation, uh, but something that of course, they they are they are always compared. Um, I haven't done the beer review, maybe because it's not really worth reviewing a, a Peroni, um, scraping the barrel this evening. Uh, but alcohol and shooting, uh, right? If if you if you take away the the drug element and the illegal aspect for the uh, for the moment, although that is a very important aspect, especially if you're an FAC holder here in the UK, you definitely want to stay away from all the illegal shit. Um, but impairment, right? I think that's maybe the, that's going to be the concern of people is impairment. How is it going to affect your judgment? How is it going going to affect your ability to safely control a, a firearm? Well, alcohol. If you go to Bisley, which is the National Shooting Centre for the UK, it's where the NRA of the UK is based, um, you know, the CPSA, the head organisation for clay pigeon shooting here within the UK, um, that it must have like the highest density population of bars or pubs um of anywhere in surrey in the in the county that it's that the national shooting center uh, is based in every clubhouse has a bar right and that's in a shooting ground so yes of course it, you know it's it's down to the shooter to be responsible and to make sure that they they don't consume alcohol until the shooting um, has finished. But how is that managed? And and it is an interesting thing that, again, just taking the the Ill illegalities out of it for a moment, that older shooters may be against certain impairments, but you know it's all right to have a shandy with your lunch um, before you go back on the detail, which I've seen many shooters um, do at Bisley. Um, you know, or it's it's okay to get absolutely smash the night before a match or competition or a day shooting and you know you're probably still not fit to drive but you're out there on the line with a rifle so you know i do find the i i think probably more where that animosity um to the the likes of you know obviously in the in the u.s legal recreational drugs is you know the the stigma of the illegalities previously um and you know people aren't you know it, 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 in relative speaking it is quite new for for that to be legalized out in the u.s um so that's i think more where the the concerns come from um you know that that previous or well, that's definitely illegal that must be bad why how can you do it um but you know people are quite happy to to have a beer um you know in the vicinity or of of people shooting um so yeah in terms of how people feel here i mean i i'm not going to speak for everyone in in the uk um and again it's probably a subject to um steer clear of i mean still you know there's a certain negative association between guns and drugs right <laughs> um uh, but yeah you know maybe if if you want to have that discussion and you want a tip for the, for the argument uh, bring up bring up alcohol Uh, hi, Callum. I'm considering going to the Czech Republic for a weekend gun training course. The company is called Czech Tactical Pursuits Firearms Training. Have you any knowledge of them? Uh, no, no, I do not. I've not heard about them. Although I can recommend, um, well, it's, I think it's, it's American Shooting Trips or it's Shooting, is it Shooting Holidays UK? Um, so it's the guys that you know, between Kentucky and Calibre and American shooting trips, they run trips out to Czech Republic, uh, out uh, out to Prague, um, and where else have they been recently? I think it's just Czech Republic. So, I mean, I can certainly speak for them. Absolutely amazing trips. I think they're, uh, you know, I've, I've been on a couple of the Prague trips. You get to do, again, a wide variety of different shooting from a little bit of practice, a little bit of plinking to full-on competition, and you get to shoot a load of guns that we can't uh, we can't own here. So, uh, but yeah, I haven't heard of that uh, particular uh, company, so can't really comment. Uh, 
uh, World Gun Owners Association. The where is the pins where the mold meets, not the mold faces. Okay, that's. I mean, I'm. I believe maybe I had the wrong end of the stick, but when we were having in my previous work, when we were having stuff uh, made, um, they they were saying that basically all of the faces could well. It was more where the um, where the plastic came into the mold. It was usually that channel and any faces that were around it. Whereas you know there were areas of the mold that maybe didn't have the same pressure or maybe the same sort of flow and you know abrasion um, as as other areas. Uh, Scotsman, like you guys, you just like someone's someone's given the skittles and the red bulls to you guys tonight. Um, <laughs> Self defence is a great argument. Why shouldn't we be able to defend ourselves with a firearm? Why should we be victim to a criminal who doesn't care? Now, I think I know what you're getting at with that. And while self defence is not something that I usually like to indulge in discussion on. We are all about uh, free speech and open discussion on this channel, but I will keep it to the facts. The um, the assumption or even statement that you are not legally allowed to defend yourself with a firearm in the UK um, is actually incorrect. And what I like to do straight away is open it out, not just with firearms. So as the law stands, um, it is a criminal offence here within the UK, apart from Northern Ireland, to possess something, uh, anything, any object of any description, from a lampshade to a golf club to a firearm or a knife. It is a criminal offence to possess any object for the purpose of self-defence. As soon as you own something for that specific purpose, then it becomes an offensive weapon and you can get yourself into all sorts of trouble. However, as the law stands, when it comes to self-defense, you are allowed to defend yourself. If you fear for your uh, for your own safety or your life, or you know, I, I think there's it's a very complicated area of the law defending somebody else. But I, I think the the way it goes is, if you feel somebody is unable to defend themselves, you can then defend them on their behalf, um, and in self-defense as long as it's justified and proportionate um you are able to use whatever you see fit in that moment but what you have to remember is if you hurt somebody um or worse you are going to have to explain it and you are most likely going to have to explain it and justify it to a judge or to a jury um and and this is what can get quite confusing and this is you know, certainly something that I would like to see changed, not necessarily in making things easier or harder or stricter or looser, but clarification. Um, because it's, you know, define to me what is proportionate. Um, define to me what is is justified. It is something that you're going to have to make a very, very quick decision on something that is very, very important. And getting it wrong either way could well could lose it could lead to be fatal for either yourself or or somebody else um so it, it would just be nice and, and this isn't specifically to do with um with firearms but it would be nice to actually have clarification of you know what the definition of proportionate because at the end of the day you're the one that's going to have to go and explain it and justify it in front of a judge um and hope that you know and, and hope that the jury not necessarily the judge but the jury um feel that your decision was correct there are a number of stories that on both sides of people using it disproportionately and, and also people using firearms proportionately uh, for self-defense in the uk lawfully um the i think the one of the biggest stories uh it was a farm couple found people in their house one of them had a knife um, and they so happened to have uh, a shotgun um, and they used the shotgun and successfully defended themselves um, and no charges were, well charges might have been brought against them but they, they weren't found guilty of it um, and they, they I'm not going to say get away with it um, but you know they, yeah they, they had no sentence, they, they weren't convicted um, of, of anything so we do have to be very specific with the language that we use because it, it is not against the law to defend yourself in the UK um, you just have to be very mindful of what what is 
what you feel a, a jury is going to say is proportionate you know if if somebody verbally abuses you and you know you pull out a baseball bat and batter them that's going to be viewed i think we can all agree that's probably going to be pretty uh dis disproportionate um but yeah i mean there's a million and one different examples that i could probably go into on on that uh but yeah that is really where the law um where the law stands on it of course the real anomaly uh is that in northern ireland you are specifically allowed to have a firearm for the purpose of self-defense of course this this was born uh, more from the troubles and i believe born um out of sort of serving and ex-serving police and mod personnel out there that became um you know they became targets they um had a, a genuine sort of a threat to their lives uh, and they were then able to keep their guns for the purpose of self-defense um and handguns and i believe carry i think they can they can conceal carry out in the out in northern ireland um but it's not prolific as far as i'm aware and the i should really sit down and do like an interview with with mike Lindsay because he does like he, he knows this stuff he's out in northern ireland he knows this stuff um you know, inside and out uh, but basically to be able to get as far as i'm aware to get a handgun for the purpose of self-defense in northern ireland um, you have to show that there is a credible threat to your life you you can't just be i want a handgun for self-defense you have to demonstrate why you are particularly at risk and why there may be somebody um after you so it's not limited to the police and and mod but um you know your average citizen if they can they can demonstrate a uh, a genuine you know threat to their lives uh redneck fury it should be a human right to defend your life um you know again our, our law doesn't say otherwise uh it's not doesn't say you can't um it very much says you you can and again like you know if you're interested i would really go and read the law on it and you know it's not i, I know um, unfortunately there is a there is always going to be a connection to it with with firearms and shooting of course i'm very much focused on the the sport element but i i am interested in all areas of the law um and you know i'm quite passionate about trying to relay that to other people that may be interested in, it in as well so i do understand that there will be people interested in other areas of the law that aren't too particular or specific to the uk um and of course i will always try and do my best to to clear that up or answer any questions that you may have uh, but yeah should i do a full video on it i've thought about it i've done it in the past let's let's just wait and see um plenty of other videos to make at the at the moment Uh, redneck fury thank you very much appreciate the support um got to run but here's a fiver for a beer good luck my man no really appreciate it and thank you for um for joining english eating medical cannabis prescribed by a doctor is legal in the uk and has been since um 2018 again it's not something that i'm you guys like self-defense and weed like what what fucking contrasting subjects are that you know it's just like you know self-defense yeah but i also just you know i just want to sit here and smoke a blunt like <laughs> it's like like the, the contrast in the topics that you guys want to talk about or maybe there's like a split down the middle half of you are just really chilled out the others not so much um but yeah I, i've heard various things about this about medical uh marijuana being legal here in the uk um i couldn't say either way it's again not something that i know a huge amount um let's google let's let me fucking my search history now is gonna be fucked is medical marijuana legal in the uk Medical use. Medical use of cannabis was legalized 
in the UK on the 1st of November 2018 after the cases of two epileptic children who benefit from using cannabis brought, uh, brought increased public attention to the use. Okay, it is it is legal for medicinal. I'm sure, I'm sure though it's not, you know, it's not like the American, um, you know, b- prior to it becoming full um, uh, recreationally legal, um, you got your doctor's card, and there were lots of doctors. Um, that that I just found funny. You know, you wait, you're just saying I need a, you know, there's a license to print money for. No, I'm not going to say shady doctors, although I just did. Uh, but you know, doctors that maybe were a little bit more liberal with signing off for um, uh, medical marijuana. I don't think it's anywhere near that in the UK. It's it's going to be incredibly rare and very specialist situations. Uh, but yeah, anyway, why this isn't I mean, this is a gun channel? Like like keep it to the guns. <laughs> Okay, Scotsman. I was arguing with. Uh, I was arguing. I was arguing. We should be able to own firearms and other objects for self-defense. Um, okay. Um, I'm not going to get into that discussion. <laughs> To responsibly own a gun here in America, in Texas particularly, one should not only know the relevant laws, but the relevant cases. Thanks for the uh, redirect. You're you're very welcome. English eating in NI, you can get a personal protection weapon, PPW license, which allowed you to conceal carry there, but as you say, it's rare and hard to get. Um, just like you know, even FACs in the UK now. Uh, speaking of which, some positive news and the next topic for this evening: um, Hampshire firearms licensing. Many of you will know over the previous few weeks and multiple discussions around this particular uh, licensing department. Uh, they said that they were going to review the situation. They closed due to COVID. Um, you know, and this, you know, we, they closed due to COVID in the same week that. Bojo was saying back to work, back to normal. But anyway, um, they said they were going to review it on the 20th of March. That date sort of passed, uh, sort of came and went. Uh, However, um, good news, there is an email doing the rounds that Hampshire Firearms Licensing is now back, well, not at this exact moment, but will be back open for business on the 4th of April. Um, and a little bit of clarification. So I know, Happy, you had yours returned, so this is potentially good news for you. Although I think they then say if it's longer than 12 months, then you're fucked. Um, no, sorry, six months, then you're fucked. Uh, but basically, they're opening, they're, they're allowing, from the 4th of April, new applications and new grants um, to be processed. Uh, so yeah, if you want to read this in full, I'm not going to read it verbatim. But if you want to, if you are in Hampshire and you want to see this in full, then head over to the English Shooting uh, Facebook page. And on the note of uh, grants, applications, and FACs, um, and I specifically didn't want to make any mention of this yesterday because none of you fuckers would believe me i can't even believe it myself um but i actually have my my fac application interview there has been progress they have found my application from whatever pile it was or bin it was in um i've drug it out and and i did i was almost in disbelief my feo phoned me a few days ago um and and said, yeah, we'd um we'd like to arrange a meeting for you to do your uh your FAC interview. And I was like, you're joking, <laughs> like really? Who are you? Like like I thought it, you know, I almost went, oh fuck off, Connors, you know, and put put the phone down. So progress, and it, I'll take any progress at this point, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, that's uh, of course I, I'm unfortunately away for the next three fucking weeks so that that couldn't have been timed any worse but uh yeah uh we've got a date for once i'm back in the in the uk uh so yeah we just have to see i mean you know i remember on my first application it was a good three months 
after the interview that they they finally processed it um and what's to say there aren't going to be further challenges uh, brought up uh, or or any issues uh, created so we will have to see how that goes but yes it's been a while i, I pretty much it used it was like a regular thing through lockdown uh, and you know when they were open and actually processing you know the uh, the weekly english shooting licensing fac update well finally i i'd given up trying i don't know the last fucking time we actually gave a solid update because for the last two two years two years when did i put that bloody application in oh was it october 20 that's so that's not two years it's getting on for one month who am i um 18 months the application has been in for 18 months of course they did shut down for a long period over over there but um yeah for for pretty much the last six months no point it's been exactly the same just waiting 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 oh hampshire's shut again joy um so yeah i, I on that note whilst on the 4th of april they uh, o- they're opening up for new applications they have been processing applications and have been doing interview and and sort of fully back to it um behind the scenes so this is what we've been saying the past few weeks which is they're going to have a backlog there's going to be a mountain of applications to clear so they were probably using that closed down time um certainly the last few weeks i've been made aware of other people that have either had invitations for interviews or have actually had their interviews and i think even people that have begun to be granted uh, certificates uh, so yeah they have been i think trying to clear the backlog um and yeah mine's mine's part of it who who would have thought um so yeah we we have to see we have to see what comes of that it could be very interesting i am almost not to necessarily spoil my chances or create any difficulties i am very tempted to phone my feo back up and ask if he would be willing to do it on camera um obviously there's going to be certain areas of that interview that i definitely don't want to be uh, aired on <laughs> you know personal details and um you know matters like that uh, aired online but I would absolutely love the opportunity to sort of like actually vlog the the interview from the moment they sort of open the well I open the door um and sit down with them and and maybe actually like I know I like the reason I haven't asked is I know what the answer is going to be uh I don't know never never say never but I think it would be awesome um and I, I think it would be greatly beneficial to um, to new applicants to actually is it is one of those regular questions what's the interview like what can i expect what questions do they ask what are they going to do um you know and you, you could even i mean i i'm going off on the tangent here but like you could really you know the feo or even hampshire firearms licensing could have the opportunity to say like look this is what we're looking for um you know if you want to make a job our job easier you can have all this prepared uh, and even down to the inspection they could sort of and i know there's a i don't know what police force it is but there's a number of videos i see regularly on facebook of there's like a traffic unit that is doing something similar but f- for cars talking about you know um window tints and uh, personalized number plates and what is acceptable and what isn't and you know th- and speed cameras like demystifying speed cameras and speed vans and you know what what they can and can't do and you know how accurate they are and all that sort of stuff so it'd be great for a firearms licensing department to sort of open their doors like that and allow that to happen so i don't know maybe maybe it's worth an email um so i mean i can't um you know i don't want to jinx it but i don't think they can refuse an application for just asking that question can you uh but yeah it would be awesome um i'm sure a lot of you would want to see that process i'm sure there's a lot of people that would love to see my my interview um that's i i'm sure it's going to be relatively interesting to say to say the least uh on both sides so yeah we'll um we'll see how that goes but yeah i thought i'd give you the well that's the only update i've had for the last really 18 months uh yeah but anybody that's based in hampshire if if you're thinking of applying if you're you know wanting to get into to shooting getting your certificates getting your licenses then um you can as of the 4th of april you can apply you can start that process and and join this uh well you don't need the license to 
join the sport, but you can start the process to becoming a firearms owner here within the UK. Uh, Domo, um, good luck with your FAC interview, Mr. Callum. Um, <laughs> Mr. Callum, because I sort of like that. No, I think oh, a number of you, um, uh, a number of you wishing me good luck. No, appreciate that, really do. Um, happy, I have my alarm set for early Monday morning. Um, why not like one past twelve? Although that's saying that, uh, um, that's saying that there's somebody the other end of Hampshire Firearms Licensing that's going to make it all live on the 1st of, um, on, on, on one minute past 12. Um, and also, Happy, thank you for your um, your best wishes in Discord. Uh, just as a quick note, in if you're interested, we do talk about Discord quite regularly. Um, if you don't know what Discord is, it's like an instant messenger forum. Um, there's a UK-based shooting one. If you want to learn more about the sport, if you want to talk to like-minded people, um, then I've just put a link in the chat box. Uh, that's the invite, so you can go and join that and um, see everybody and talk to everybody in Discord. It, there really is a wealth of knowledge there. So you know, and it's it can be completely anonymous. You can you can make an anonymous username. So if you've got a load of stupid, qu of course you can do that on YouTube as well. But maybe you're too shy to to use the chat box i don't know why i don't buy it unless you ask or nibble my ear uh but uh but yeah you can um head into discord worth of knowledge in there um and some really helpful people some less than helpful people in there sometimes uh but uh usually a good a good bunch uh but yeah no appreciate that happy thank thank you very much uh, English. My med form has 1.5 months of validity left. If they throw it out because they can't process it within that time span, I'm going to have a fit. Um, I could just, I could just imagine it. Um, you get in the phone call. No, I'm sorry, your application has been rejected. Um, you know, you've got to reapply and get a new medical form. And then just this, you know, the screeching and reeing coming from your house while you're thrashing around on the floor i can i can picture it now what i would hope what I, I i would estimate that they are going to do is in the situation given that it's fairly unprecedented if you you know prior prior to covid and all this the the new criteria was that you had to go and get the gp form filled out prior to ap applying basically if you put an application in you then had 24 hours to send them a gp form otherwise they, they spit it back at you ask me how i know uh, what i would hope now there's no real need as far as i'm aware again this would be something to sort of talk to Hampshire firearms licensing and, and really share it with with you guys but uh, if they were open to doing so um i, I mean maybe them sitting down in the room with me and with a camera what could go wrong uh so yeah anyway they uh i hope whilst there is i i can't see any reason for having this mandatory you need to send the form in prior to ap applying or very shortly after applying i hope that they give some dispensation and they will say ah yeah okay we're processing your application but your the gp form is now out of date uh, actually, what we're going to do is we're not going to throw the form back at you. Uh, go and get another one. Maybe they pause it or they complete the full process, and then they they wait. You know, if there's a GP form outstanding, then they wait until that's been uh, received. At the end of the day, it is, as far as I'm aware, a box ticking exercise. If you've got a clean GP form uh, from your GP with no uh, history or of you know any medical issues mental or otherwise then it should be a right okay well we don't need to look any further in that it's completely blank of course the complications are going to be is if there is something on there and then, then they need to look you know deeper into it but yeah I, I hope that they they change things a little bit for these people like yourself happy that have had the application returned to them that potentially could have the gp form um expire so we'll see how that goes um i'm very much i think going to be in that boat so i'll let you guys know uh timbo not so good news they were shooting in germany there is probably going to be another crackdown even though the gun was illegally purchased outside germany um 
well it's a shame to hear that and you know uh, your heart goes out to anybody that was was injured or, or killed um within that shooting again a shame you know it's just like other similar instances out in europe where guns have been obtained illegally outside of the country illegally smuggled in and then used to kill people and then you get all the cries for further restrictions it's like you know literally you could ban knives forks and spoons in germany um it's an open border (laughs) so it's like people can bring you know illegally but they can bring in anything they they want um uh, but yeah hopefully you guys don't um you guys don't suffer too much from that um i mean it, you know we're we're seeing this with this is a uh another topic for for this evening but it is what we're seeing with with Demon and Cornwall uh we're seeing basically le- law abiding citizens being punished for the actions of somebody that for all intents and purposes wasn't a law abiding citizen obviously had mental health issues and most definitely wasn't a member of the shooting community he might have been a firearms owner in name um the fact that he was a firearms owner as we all know is just laughable um should have never should have never been given the the history of of that guy um yeah and he was certainly not part of the community he wasn't you know he was a shotgun certificate holder you don't need to be a member of a club for that so as far as i'm aware he wasn't a member of a club he, he wasn't at the time a member of any organizations he just wasn't he was i think in more ways than one a complete outcast and an outlier um and not representative of the shooting community as a as a whole Uh, Ruin, as a former police firearms officer and now academic with a FAC, I feel that there are many reasons to relax the law, i.e. the personal use of marijuana. What is it with the weed tonight? Jesus. Maybe I should do like a Amsterdam special one one weekend. Jesus. Um, <laughs> but none to... Re- um, but none to relax the UK firearms legislation. I mean that's so you're you would be happy for them to relax the laws around marijuana. Um I do know it's not called marijuana, right? That's just that's just how I'm choosing to pronounce it. Um Um it's you know, the the, the scientific name is of course Mary Jane. But uh <laughs> so you're you'd be happy to relax the laws around uh, marijuana, but not to relax the laws um around firearms very very uh interesting um i mean certainly on the firearms point i think there's a lot of statistical evidence to show that banning or restricting certain types of firearms and and this is the thing is a lot of people it's, it's what ben ben Zan did um in uh the bbc2 article um and let's be i haven't I'll, I'll bring it up i don't have i ever shown it on a stream um uh, uh, what, what was it called? Brits with guns. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I can find the the OG. Is the article on the video? Let's have a look. Uh, no, there's no full article. Fantastic. Um, what was it called? Uh, but anyway, he he took this. Um, he he twisted it. I mean, what he said. Here we go. The the article. Um, God, that was that was six years ago. Jesus. Um, like. The people who want the UK's gun laws relaxed, right? Now, yes, technically, I do quite often call for the relaxation of laws, right? But there's a very... The the assumption when people hear this phrase about relaxing gun laws is that they instantly go, we want, um, we want more people to own guns. Okay, that's technically not 
incorrect either but you know we just want anyone to own guns we want people to be able to get hold of guns left right and center um yeah it's anyway anyway you can go and read this it's um did a piece and there's a video on youtube which actually i believe a lot of people find the channel from so thanks bbc um but yeah you can go and read the full article here uh people who want uk's gun laws relax like you know, yes of course um i would love to see handguns legalized within the uk and, and they're not necessarily illegal they're just under section five but i would like to see handguns um you know full ball handguns back on section one here uh within england scotland um and wales now yes that is relaxing laws but i don't want it any easier for people to get hold of the guns i think our um our, our licensing system is the last couple of years have not been the best representation for it but on the whole our licensing system is is fairly i really don't want to use the word good um <laughs> But I'm overall happy with the the spirit of our firearms licensing, um, and you know the checks and balances that you have to go through. At the end of the day, it's it's not actually that dissimilar of getting a driving license here in in the UK. You have to fill out a load of forms. You have to get your um, photo taken. Um, you then have to go and have some lessons or some training or some supervision and usually when they your your trainer or your supervisor feels that you are ready um, and capable of passing the necessary tests you go to a test center and you are examined you are um you know you you are you are checked medically um you know your your skill um, and ability is is measured and then they give you a they give you a license and you know, I okay. I managed to pass my test in two months, um, and and that was actually with that was on my third go. Um, yeah, not not particularly happy with that. Should have passed first time. That fucking cyclist. But yeah, I managed even with um, with three tests in total. I passed my driving test uh, two months after my seventeenth birthday there's actually a quite okay you need to become a full member of a home office approved club which does take a little bit longer but two months is i'm gonna say not is not the average actually how google's your friend you know how long uh average time to pass driving test So, oh, they could just give us, they sort of give a rough answer. It usually takes around 30 to 40 hours to reach test standard. Um, two times 1.5 hour lessons per week should allow you to reach a test standard within two to three months, depending on your ability. Now, that's two lessons a week. Um, I only did one lesson per week. Um, I think I only had like 20, 20 hours in, in total. Um, so actually, uh, you know, and of course, that's a lot of money. So six months, it could, uh, maybe not the average, but let's say, you know, not out of the question to say it's going to take six months for you to be able to pass your driving test. Um, you know, maybe as, as soon as three months, if you do really expedite it, that's not too dissimilar to how long it's going to take you to get a, um, a firearm um, certificate here within the UK, or even a shotgun. Actually, shotgun's probably a better example because you don't need the forerunner, right? You don't need to join a club, you don't need to for be a full member and all of that. So actually, you probably, in some counties, COVID aside, uh, you can get a shotgun license quicker than you can get a driving license without any training, supervision. Actually, that's a really good example. It's actually harder to get a driving license than it is a shotgun certificate in the UK. Right? I think I've just managed after, what, nearly 10 fucking years of running this channel. I think I've just been able to quantify why I'm actually a supporter of our licensing system. Um, because on the face of it, it's not actually that difficult or arduous. It can be complex, and, and I think not many people 
you know, certainly before before I started the channel, not many people were outwardly explaining the process and that's where people tripped up like of course you go on youtube and type in you know how do you complete a theory test you'll see a million fucking videos if you see you know how you know what's the process of passing your driving test in the uk there'll be loads of videos on it type in how do you fill out a firearm certificate in the uk i can put good money there's going to be only one or two videos and i'm pretty sure i know whose face you're going to be seeing so you know yeah it's it, that's that's why i don't think it's that bad of course you know when you get into the whole thing of law so where was i going with this the yes i would like to see our laws relaxed in some ways like full ball handguns legalized or on section one again for sporting purposes i'd like to see semi-auto full ball rifles back on section one for sporting purposes um yes that is relaxing our laws i don't want it any easier or any quicker for people to be able to get their guns um, and to own guns, I think the checks and balances in place are actually pretty sensible um, overall. And yeah, so when you, I don't want to relax how easy it is. So back onto the original point, Rowan. Uh, there is a lot of stati statistical evidence um, that shows that banning or restricting a particular gun doesn't have any impact to crime. Uh, handguns still make up over 40% of the firearm offences that are committed every single year within the UK. That is actually an increase from before um, from before they banned them. So they banned them, the number went up, and it is still the single largest, um, you know, handguns account for the single largest uh, amount of crime than any other um, any other gun. It, the, the, the facts on it are just stupendous in that regard. So what difference is it going to make legalizing them? Actually, hand-grown crime, statistically speaking, is more likely to fall than, um, than increase if they were to be made, uh, made legal. There is no statistical uh, evidence at all actually to the contrary that banning a specific type of gun or restricting a specific type of gun has uh, any uh, effect or, or on crime numbers so you know that's um you know go go on ons if you if you want to drop me an email i'm more than happy to provide um the countless um statistics that i found over uh, over my time there's there's others that's usually my main one uh, oh yes in terms of firearm fatalities um i think it's an average of between 16 and 20 deaths per year uh, due to firearms within the UK, with only one or two on average being attributed to a legally held firearm. The majority of those one or two cases where a, a, a legal firearm is used in a fatality, um, the majority of the time it is a suicide. Not saying that that's any better, not saying that that's something that should just be discredited, but it isn't like it's a, an, it's an assault or someone has been uh, murdered. Um, you know, suicide and murder are slightly different things. So, in terms of the fatalities, it is the illegal guns. So legalizing s certain types of guns isn't going to have an effect on that, right? It's just, again, statistically, is there's there's no correlation um, between them. So yeah, I know you probably mean in you know you you might mean in, in loosening things in terms of how easy it is or straightforward it is, um, but I I think there's actually a lot of evidence to put good to put forward a good argument um, that we should be able to to own more, given the standard and the strictness of our uh, of our firearms certificate application process. There we go. That was a long one. Got that. Got got there in the end. <laughs> Callum granted FAC. One two two single shot rifle, no ammunition to be held, not to be discharged on the mainland UK. Not the first time I've been told I can't discharge myself, but yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I I certainly didn't hold back on what I applied for. I'm I'm sure there is going to be a discussion with my FEO about um, the the number of guns and also the variety of guns that I've applied for. I, I mean, you know, the it's it's like like the the real crux of it is that this is not a typical first time application um i'm certainly not a typical it's not really a first time application but this i'm not a typical um applicant 
uh, let's let's just say uh, shooting is my career. Uh, it's it's my income. It's uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's my life. I've got other aspects to to my life which I which I enjoy, but it's shooting is a very very big part of my life. And despite the fact not having a um, certificate to uh, to possess or purchase uh, firearms here within the UK, I tend to do more shooting than most FAC com- uh, holders combined. So I like at the end of the day, it's like I have justification for what I've applied. I'm going to go out and use what I'm. Um, I've applied for uh, so why wouldn't I apply for them Uh, if it comes down to security my understanding of the security requirements here within the UK are are pretty good Uh, I I, and I understand it is you know what is required when when storing larger amounts of uh, of firearms but it will be interesting to see um, how how they feel about that of course my my belief is, you know, at the end of the day, you've only got two hands. Why does it matter if you've got more than two guns? So, you know, you, what are you going to go and do with ten guns that you can't go and do with two? So, um, yeah, it's going to be, I'm sure, an interesting uh, discussion overall. Uh, Domo, just read the description. Have a safe trip here. The good old USA. Have a fun time and good luck in KY. Looking forward to those vid uploads in the future. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, and I hope um, I hope I really do do it justice. There is going to be some interesting um, and I think quite spectacular stuff going on when we're in the US. Yes, we'd love to see your FE FAC interview. Um, awesome. Yeah. Again, I I would love to film it. Maybe maybe we'll give him a call and see. Um, David KFC is open for membership. No, that's not Kentucky Fried Chicken. For those of you, uh, those of you that's thinking, why is the guy saying KFC is open for membership? I didn't know KFC did membership. Where do I get my KFC membership? Um, so, for anybody looking for a Home Office approved club, of course, for going the sporting route, being a member of a Home Office approved club is uh, vitally important for a firearms application. My home office approved club is, of course, Kentucky Firearms Club, or otherwise known as KFC. Um, their website is kentuckyfirearmsclub.org.uk. And if you're interested in joining, if you want to ask any questions, then there's a contact us uh, form there, and you can you can fire away and join. You can you join on the website? I thought you used to be able to join on the website. Maybe that's changed. But anyway, if you want to join, go and drop them a, a message and you can um, you can come down to a KFC meet. I, I, the reason I recommend them, it's not just I'm biased because they're my club. The reason that it's my club is because of how varied the shooting is, um, what they get up to, and also the, the passion in getting new shooters. There are some clubs in the UK that are like dead against either new shooters or even young shooters, and if you're a young new shooter, then you're fucked. But um, with KFC, they welcome everyone with open arms. They really are about getting as many people shooting and sharing the sport with as many people. Whether you go to them, you know, whether you want to have an FAC or not, whether you go and shoot with them once a year or Every single time there's a shoot, um, you will be welcome there and they will help you, you know, better yourself with your shooting ability or help you on your path to an FAC if that is is what you want to do, competition or or so on and so forth, or or go abroad. Jimmy Guns, if I lived in the UK, the number one and number two guns I'd buy would be a lever action 357 and a ruger 1022 um i well i would argue with you because my, my my two would be a little different but still very solid choices and and actually there's not a lot you could you couldn't do with either of those guns um you know vermin shooting uh gallery even some like mini rifle plinking um yeah that, that's that's good solid you know call it good solid two guns there uh i Actually, technically, the ten. I was going to say mine would be a like a fifteen twenty two instead of the ten twenty two, but actually, the Ruger is overall more suited to more disciplines. You know, it is a superb gallery gun um, and an okay mini rifle gun. Whereas the fifteen twenty two, I'm going to say is a is a great mini rifle gun and a not so good gallery gun. Uh, you can still do gallery with a, 
1522, but it's not maybe the balance, the Ruger does pip it, but I don't know, I think I would still go to the 1522. Um, no shotguns. See, that's, you know, if, you, if you're just talking rifles, you know, those two solid choices, but clay pigeon shooting is a big thing here, uh, you know, practical shotgun. So, I mean, if I, I think if I was to narrow it down, if I could only have two, it would be a um, Benelli, Benelli M2 or, you know, a semi-auto tube fed shotgun uh, and a um, 1022 or maybe even like a battle arm. So, you know, I, I would say a 2.2 LR semi-auto AR-15 and a tube fed semi-auto 12 gauge. Those would be my two because you can do mini rifle, you can do practical shotgun, which is really, you know, my my main sort of set disciplines. You can then still turn up to a, you know, gallery match with a fifteen twenty two, but you know, you'd probably be doing it more for the fun than the competitiveness. Uh, Timbo, the Czech Republic is a good example of a country making their laws looser and not just falling into anarchy and just continuing on as normal, unlike what the anti-gun groups expect. Uh, absolutely, and the Czech Republic is a really interesting example because the uh, the president or the prime minister, I uh, forget what which one they have out there, um, but the top, the top guy um, quite famously went out there and said, uh, yeah, uh, citizens, you know, if we have a terrorist attack, then citizens should just shoot the terrorists in the head. And it's like, He's a world leader, leader of a country, and he just came out with that. That's that's very interesting. Although, um, I think less surprisingly, um, Donald Trump did come out and say something very similar about the um, the terrorist attacks in in Paris with uh, with Piers Morgan. But you sort of it, you know maybe expect that from Trump. You know, uh, Brian, if you have your if you have your DSE one or above, you can apply for a handgun for the safe and humane dispatch of wounded or injured wildlife. Uh, yes, of course, there are many different little caveats to the whole thing of um, handguns not being on section uh, one and, and, and different exemptions. It's not, as far as I'm aware, and again, I don't have a DSC one or I haven't actually ever been deer stalking, but from people that I know that have DSC ones, um, it's not an automatic uh, right. You're you're a deer stalker. You've got a DSC one. Here's your here's your humane dispatch. Um, also, not forgetting that it's it's not like what I think a lot of people think, which is oh shit, they're going to give you a humane dispatch. You can go and get a Glock nineteen. Um, you know, so, uh, some a lot of um, firearms licensing departments will restrict it to a revolver, and they will also restrict it to a two shot revolver. Now. Yeah, you know, a two-shot revolver is better than nothing. Uh, but and of course, you do need to go down the range and make sure that it is correctly zeroed for the task at hand. Uh, but it's not like you can you can join an IPSC match with your uh, humane dispatch. Uh, and and the, and of course, the reason that a lot of firearms licensing departments put this restriction on uh, is because well, the restriction of a revolver. Um, is well how do you restrict a, a semi right yeah it's like yes you have to have a, uh, a restricted magazine to two and it's like you know I'll just order another fucking magazine off eBay so they're, they're very clued up to that one and very aware um, that people can play that game so usually restricted to a revolver and, and again restricted to, to two um, if you need more than two shots, then you probably shouldn't have one. Uh, but but yeah, again, my avenue from this is very much as a sporting aspect. Uh, yes, again, some a, a handgun is better than no handgun, but you're not allowed to go in sport shoot it. And you know, if if you have, uh, you know, let's say that the only caliber you the humane dispatch is, is in a unique caliber to your other guns and you're going through hundreds of rounds through your humane dispatch your feo is going to have a lot of questions uh, either again you're missing far too much and probably not that efficient with the gun or you're going down and zeroing it a little bit too much <laughs> 
Adam, hey Callum, it's been a while. Apologize. How are you, my? How are you doing, my dude? Um, no need to apologize. I don't. I I I I am humbled and um, grateful that you feel that you you must attend the live streams. Um, it's not like I'm gonna burst out of your closet at night and um, give you a massive scare if you don't watch the live streams. But it's nice to see you, um, and nice for you to join. And uh, no, I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope hope you are enjoying this evening. And if you are enjoying this evening, hit that like button, and make sure you're subscribed. Uh, I we do this every single week, usually on a Thursday. Uh, but yeah, things have been a little bit mental over the last couple of weeks. Uh, of course, a lot of travel with you know going out to the likes of um, Northern Ireland. Um, then we had a match up in Carlisle the week before that, uh, which I'm very, very close to having the video done uh, for for that. Uh, very the, the sort of rough edit is done now. I just need to go in, um, color grade it, and add the scores. So I'm hoping that goes out tomorrow. And I've still got videos from the shooting show, the northern, uh, the northern, the British shooting show. So hopefully, I'm going to try and get those out over the next well some of them out over the next week um, and then it will be full on into the into the trip and in terms of live streams going forward i say subscribe because we do this every week and usually on a thursday i really don't know how it's going to work over the next three weeks but it is my intention to do them they might end up being like four o'clock in the morning uk time <laughs> but yeah i i'm gonna try my best and do some u.s out in the US live streams. I really don't know how that's going to work, but yeah, we we will I will try and 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 see what we can do. It might I I'm I'm just literally having a look at how much bloody equipment I have to do the live streams here. I don't think I have enough weight allowance for it. So it might just be the old old school of you know, on the laptop webcam this, that, and the other, although really do need a mic. I'm sure there's some way of figuring that out. But yeah, I, I am going to try and do live streams. So whilst obviously going to be out in the US, uh, we are going to be staying in places uh, that that does have Wi-Fi. The house in Kentucky uh, has Wi-Fi. That was a big requirement for me. So yeah, they... I, well, because this thing is like half seven... UK time. I mean, that technically works during the weeks, but it depends if we've got meeting. It, you know, we might be traveling. You know, that that's the thing. That's around 11, 12 o'clock. Uh, like, what is the time? US. I say time in Texas. So it's three o'clock in Texas, and we've been going for uh, just over an hour and a hour and a half. Um, so be half one so the half seven uk time start time would actually be half one um in the afternoon like we're most likely going to be doing something although why don't like i could do like i could go to buffalo wild wings for for lunch and live stream it i mean i'm sure you've always wanted to see me devour a whole bucket of, of um chicken wings uh but but yeah, maybe maybe that's what we can do on the Thursday. Do we have anything on the Thursday? No, I think that's we're traveling to Alabama then. Um, but maybe we stop off, even if it's half an hour, an hour. That would be pretty cool, just to find somewhere that has Wi-Fi and try it. Um, yeah, I don't... I think I'm going to have to order some stuff off Amazon. I'm just thinking I can probably use my Rode mics... But they're, and they're wireless, but I'm going to have to get an adapter. So I'm probably going to have to go on Amazon. Let me, I'm going to open the tab now. And <laughs> before I forget, that's probably the best solution in terms of mics. You can see I'm very well prepared for everything I do. Uh, <laughs> Jack to XLR. Nope, 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 nope. Don't mind me just doing some Amazon shopping. Nope, nope. Yes. There we go. Right, I've opened the tab. I will try and remember to purchase those. Because, yeah, bring in this. Although the mic isn't that big. 
We do have two suitcases. Anyway, that's that's a problem for later. Um, it's not like we only have a few days until we go out. But anyway, uh, yeah, th- we I will be trying my hardest to be able to do the live streams and um, you know try and keep them regular. But please bear with. Uh, hopefully, at least there's going to be some um, pretty awesome content uh, to keep you guys entertained if if the live streams get moved moved about a bit but i'm sure you can understand i hope you can i mean it is a pretty good reason right i'm in a different fun- fucking country uh talking of recently going to nixa i just thought i'd give a little update and dispel the myth i really should have maybe i could make a full video of this actually um but yeah as some of you might have seen again like if you should go and follow if you want like daily weekly updates you uh head over to the english shooting facebook page but those uh those pointy roofs in the background you uh or sloped roofs or familiar looking roofs in the background um of course we went to nitsa uh where of course northern ireland you're allowed four ball handguns so shooting the trusty uh ppq the warfare ppq q5 match and yeah did a bit of competition and um mr paul wybourne absolutely wiped the floor with me uh now uh, paul wyborn is is a world level uh, action air shooter for those of you that don't know what action air is it's using um airsoft guns in lieu of uh, full ball handguns uh, in ipsc it's it, it is a bona fide ipsc discipline of course not being able to have full ball handguns here in the uk action air is quite big uh, and paul's pretty decent at it now a lot of people go, oh, you can't transfer airsoft into uh, into live fire. Um, you very much can. And after we we did have a couple of hours in the morning just to get you know Paul used to the recoil and adjusting his grip and all that, and he just absolutely wiped the floor. Uh, and not just with me, but he came second uh, in in division, and I and I think might have even placed overall against even about even against the the open shooters. Um, actually, I don't have the results because they're on email and I closed my emails for the stream. Uh, he did very, very well. And it looked like somebody that had shoot, been shooting full ball handguns for a very, very long time. So this is the sort of grand plan overall with the UK PSA is, you know, provide um, provide the facility and, and the um, the avenue to be able to go and, and shoot four ball handguns so that people that are tip top action air shooters, you know, you can you can do something like action air here within England, Scotland and Wales and then go and compete internationally. And the UK PSA is, is doing a lot to make sure that that transition is taking place. And, and Paul is just a, uh, I think a sh- shining example of, of taking a talent from action air um, and potentially getting them to represent GB, GB on the world stage and hopefully fingers crossed doing very well uh, so an incredible uh, visit once again uh, pretty and almost identical to the last visit um, you know get to the range we spent a full day at the range uh, morning training you know you go there book the guns out uh, do some training some drills from some exercises get familiar with the guns again and then in the afternoon competition um, you know, you, you see if your training actually did anything. Uh, so I'd highly recommend it. You can go, anyone who is a member of the UK PSA can join NHTSA. Um, and as a full member, you can then go over there whenever you want. And NHTSA have a number of guns out there for their members, uh, both for NHTSA and also the UK PSA. So you, you know, you can go and make use of it. And, you know, they're very welcoming. Like, they love the fact that people are coming over from from England, Scotland, and Wales, making use of the facilities, and and they love the fact that, you know, it's almost you know they're, they're I think they're happy like, it's it's not necessarily shoving two fingers up at the the fact that handguns aren't you know a ban because, or that handguns aren't on section one within the mainland, but. I think they like that it's almost like nature finds a way and they're like, good on you. You know, yes, you have to get on a plane and fly over here and stay in hotels to be able to do it, but actually, fair fair play, you're coming over and doing it and you're, you're not letting it stop you, effectively. So they're really supportive. They're um, out there, um, really nice bunch of guys overall and we're always made to feel incredibly, uh, incredibly welcome. Yeah. <laughs> 
Buffalo Wild Wings live streams. That's just cruel. Well, I'm not going to pretend I'm not going to be stuffing my face full of, full of wings um, during uh, during those few weeks. Look at Susan Boyle. That will restrict your semi. <sighs> children. Children, children. <laughs> Blackstone. Um, and I actually... Well, I won't say what I'm going to say because, again, some people don't like various links and stuff made to them. Um, but yeah, Saturday stream. Yep, that's um, this isn't a usual thing. Basically, because heading out to America next week, lots of things to get in place. I, and I sort of just, I like, I haven't had a break. I know, you know, oh, I flew over to Nylon and I shot handguns. Poor me. Like, it, it's still tiring. Like, uh, traveling is still tiring and stressful and um i had a day off tuesday wednesday tuesday, tuesday. no it was off wednesday um visited some family um and i was just still knackered on the thursday and you know i i don't want to if it gets to the point where i'm like sat on the sofa and i like can't keep my eyes open like i don't want to do a stream because I don't want to fall asleep on stream and I don't want to do a half ass job. Not saying I don't do a half ass job, but there's certainly more chance of doing one or doing maybe even a quarter ass job. Um, a quarter ass job uh, if I feel um, really tired. So, yeah, and, and I was, I had to, that was it, there was a number of phone calls again due, due to the time difference. Um, I just had to stay late in the office on Thursday. To continue arranging things for this, uh, for this trip. So you know, pull me. You know, I get it, right? Fuck yourselves. Uh, but yeah, it's just I needed to move it, um, and I I just thought to myself, it's gonna be. I'm gonna try my best, but it's gonna be nigh on impossible to stick to the regular schedule over the next few weeks anyway. So might as well start now. Uh, but I'm making up for it. Um, maybe could I do like a Heathrow Airport live stream? Definitely getting arrested. De like. I'm, I'm gonna. Sorry, did I just even ask that? I'm gonna sit in Heathrow and do a shooting live stream, not like that. Um, do a a live stream in which shooting is discussed and firearms are discussed. I mean, on the flip side, that's one way to get an MP5 on a live stream. And I wouldn't be handling it either. So YouTube wouldn't be able to give me a strike on the channel. I mean, I didn't like, I oh know, but somebody would be handling it. And it's not necessarily me. But then there would be police. Does YouTube really have an issue with police handling firearms on live stream? Anyway, I, I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. Or you can get, you could rent those offices now. I've seen those little glass offices and then no one would be able to hear me. That could be brilliant. Or like a lounge, an airport lounge. Again, loads of people will probably end up arrested. Anyway, um, we'll see. We, we, we'll see how it goes. But I will try and find ways to continue doing live streams um, and bringing you the silly goodness every every week. Um, in terms of silly goodness, uh, the Devon and Cornwall Firearms Licensing Department. Uh, so this is actually off the result of a freedom of information request that Basque put in. So there's been lots of speculation and obviously lots of people saying, oh, the number of revocations is higher. They're, you know, it's a bloodbath at the moment for certificate holders and they're taking guns left, right and centre. Well, the statistics seem to agree with that. We've finally got some sort of hard evidence to, um, you know, not just the suspicion of this, but to confirm it. So Bass put in a number of freedom information requests and the data received showed that the level of revocations running um, running at nine times the rate of the previous 13 years. So, and, and, and actually thinking of this, I, I do like to try and look at things from sort of both angles. And I do like to try and where I can, although I don't think there's much about what, you know, the handling of um, or what Devon and Cornwall actually did in the handling of a certain individual's firearm certificate was, you know, is is in, in excu is excusable in any way. But I can look at this from, from both sides. So what they're saying is, 
you know, like they're punishing lawful shooters. And yes, I I would be inclined to agree with that, and I would be inclined to say that that is uh, that is the case. They um, they've now gone from very lenient to very strict. But you could look at it in another way, which it still doesn't cover them in glory. This isn't about necessarily getting back at the shooting community. So a lot of people like to jump on this, oh, you know, they're just out to get us, this, that, and the other. I don't think that is the, the case. Um, I think a more potentially plausible side of that is they're doing it for, like, in a way, virtue signaling. They're doing it to be seen to be doing something. They're doing it to say to the press and say to the media and the pub greater public look look we're taking all these licenses away what a wonderful job obviously at the shooting community's expense but i don't necessarily think it's it's actually that either uh what it could be and which is actually a lot more dangerous is that they are correcting mistakes so now a lot of the examples that I have I've been made aware of, and also what uh, Field Sports Britain has covered, and and on that note, there is a, a video going into more detail about this. Um, you know, Field Sports Britain has done a fantastic job of covering all these different stories and and really airing what is going out going on there, which is only going to help um, sort of cast more. Um, sort of more spotlight and make make more people aware um so you know then this is all they actually interview uh you know basque and, the, and they talk about this uh this increase uh but i think more what's happening is not necessarily a, a retaliation to the shooting community or even trying to make us a, a make an example out of us but moreover you must oh yeah so there are some exceptions because there are some cases covered by Field Sports Britain that you're just like, why the fuck have they taken those guns? But then you don't know. You don't know the full picture. Or, or is everyone being truthful uh, with the circumstances? But I think actually there's a lot of... But the the person that committed those um, those murders, is that an exception? Is it an exception that Devon and Cornwall police gave you know gave him um and only him a certificate when he shouldn't have had one and it does ask the question and and i think we have touched on this before how many other people out there that are quite obviously unsuitable to be in possession of a of a firearm and you know they've got you know i mean he was he had members of his family calling up the police saying please come and take his guns he was on anger management classes he had you know a history of assault um you know, or or alleged a history of alleged assaults um and you know it's there's all this building case that the guy is just he's not right and then of course all of the um shit he was you know on going out on social media and you know talking about the like what is it the incels and how he hated women and all of that and it's like yeah pick one of those that's justification enough to not to say that guy shouldn't shouldn't have a license so he um you know he most definitely shouldn't have a gun how many other people out there are were in that case so it might be it, it could be I, I think it's sort of any any combination of those um but probably shows why it's so high because you know, Devon and Cornwall have probably gone through literally every application that they've processed in like you know the last umpteen years, and they've they're going shit. Like he definitely shouldn't have one. Actually, looking into it, he definitely shouldn't have one. Um, and actually, you know, maybe there's some people, unfortunately, um, mixed into it, which you know maybe have some, you know, they don't exactly have a spotless record, but it's nowhere near the level of the likes of the person. Uh, that committed those um those murders so yeah i think there's more it's more a case of they've there's actually maybe a pattern of them handing out licenses when they shouldn't have and they have swung the other way and people you know the sort of innocent 
people have got caught up in it and it's perhaps the people that we're seeing on field sports britain saying look you know i had a disagreement with my neighbor 10 years ago and now they've come and taken away my guns those sorts of people are having their licenses and certificates taken away on you know on a sort of unwarranted but Devon and Cornwall are now taking no chances. But yeah, I I think it's more of a concern of how many people might have been out there that genuinely didn't pass the requirements or the standards to actually have a certificate in the first place. And you know, is it just lucky that we've well, I say, you know, take take this with a pinch of salt, but you know, is I think it's pure it could be potentially pure luck that we've only had one Plymouth. Um and and again, this is why I am when it works and it is run effectively and efficiently. I am a supporter of our firearms licensing uh, and the processes involved because you know the processes involved and the bars that you normally have to meet would have prevented that person from having a certificate, which would have prevented him using a, a gun. Now, I'm not going to say it would have prevented him going to Lally and killing a load of people and as as horrid and sort of selfish as this might sound like it wouldn't have affected the shooting community you know we wouldn't have had this blowback on the shooting community and you know these hundreds of thousands of people that have certificates and you know are some the most law-abiding people in the in the country now being dragged through the courts and dragged through uh, the mud I'm, I'm not saying i want it to happen with any other object but you know in terms of preserving our sport and and uh, preserving the ability to own firearms here in the uk like it doesn't help when it happens with with a gun and you know when our licensing system is used effectively it removes the it removes the situations where lawful gun owners or to some extent removes or reduces the chances of legal guns being used in these situations which protects our sport uh, at a wider um, at a wider level so yeah nine times higher they really are going for it at the moment in Devon and Cornwall this isn't just a you know um a light thing to you know a nine time nine fold increase in revocations that's significant now basque are awaiting the results of further um freedom of information requests to see how other counties are doing at the moment in terms of their revocation and this is what i'm very interested about we already knew you know we didn't have necessarily the evidence but we already knew that devon and cornwall had drastically increased the number of revocations that they were they were issuing but is this a countrywide effect you know how many other um departments you know other departments you know, are they sat there going actually yeah we <clears throat> we need to be really really strict now and they've actually you know we're going to see a, a countrywide increase in in revocations or are they going to go actually we're doing our jobs we're pretty confident that the people that we have given certificates to are suitable and that they do meet the test and we are happy for them to be owning guns because we didn't just seemingly randomly hand out certificates so yeah it's going to be very interesting to i think more interesting to see I, I, it doesn't tell us anything more than what we already knew in terms of this freedom of information with Devon and Cornwall, but it is certainly going to be, um, I think, quite eye-opening to see how it's had an effect uh, across the country overall. They've given uh, Arby's live stream. We don't have that here in the UK. Like I, there's other places like a Cracker Barrel, maybe like a morning Cracker Barrel live stream. I don't like mornings, but I mean the place is a cheesecake factory, a cheesecake factory live stream. Oh, oh, that's that's maybe that's what I should do. That's oh, I said I said I wasn't going to try and make it a food vlog, um, but maybe like, oh, but the problem is if we're eating out for dinner, then it's going to be like two o'clock in the morning here. But anyway, um, I'm sure I'll I'll, I'll find something out. Um, yeah, it's got to be a lunch. It's got to be a lunch live stream while we're out in the States to make it sort of work, to be sort of reasonable. Or maybe like a, maybe I switch it to like a Sunday morning. It'll be seven o'clock. 
but that's still like I'll work it out. I'll work out the times and try and figure out a best best time. Daniel, no one told me he was streaming tonight. Have you not hit the bell notification? I think you're telling me you haven't, so hit it now and then you won't miss out in future. I mean, don't you follow English Shooting on Facebook either? And you call yourself a mod. I might have to make Wonderloaf or Happy a mod if you're not going to keep up to your duties. It's not it's not my it's not my responsibility to tell you when I'm streaming. It's your responsibility to know. Yep. I'm going to have words with you. I'm going to have words with you um next week, Sunny Jim. Ian Dunn, um what's the best 308? Depends what you want to use it for. Straight away. If if you want to let us know what your uh what you intend to use it for then then we might be able to give um you know a bit more guidance i'm just gonna go out on a whim and just say remington 700 overall it's maybe not the best 308 but it's a great starting platform and you know it's like lego for rifles because there's so many upgrade components so many things you can do to it and accessories and you can really make it your own and and that's what i'd always planned with the one that i had um i did end up selling it maybe well hopefully at some point i'll be able to buy another one uh, and i'll be able to trick that out for a you know a, a long range machine i will not buy the short barrel this time though learned my lesson on that one certainly for long range shooting adam if the anti-gun people just research info before speaking they would find out how um how hard enough it is to get a gun that's the problem though with uh, with anti-gunners they they don't think before they speak uh but some of these anti-gun uh, gun people are just as evil as the mass murderer because some of them want to take guns so that they can have power over people yeah i don't doubt that um oh ian dunn long range that's current you currently have a remington 700 uh i don't know uh so long range shooting uh is 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 not something i'm hugely experienced in uh, but again it also depends what type of long range shooting if you want to go and do some target rifle then you you need uh like a i don't know any it depends where you are but you know go to what is it go to like Fortin's. So they'll be able to sort you out if you're in the uk but accuracy accuracy international in terms of a more practical long range um not necessarily tactical practical uh, long range rifle you can't really go wrong with an accuracy international incredibly accurate bits of kit incredibly expensive bits of kit uh, but you will be tack driving at a thousand yards like no problem at all you won't even be stretching the legs of the thing so um yeah uh, like ai it's synonymous with long range accuracy they they make incredible bits of kit uh, if you know you can still accurize your Remington 700 I would ask you know what 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 do you want to get more out of what what are you searching for do you want something that is more accurate do you want something that's lighter um you, with more features larger you know usually you can get all of that for the Remington 700 you can build around that action and still make you can, and improve the accuracy and maybe even functionality of the gun overall uh, but yeah if you literally want to just pay a load of money and have a out of the box solution can't really go wrong with with accuracy international brian uh, i know some farmers who have their sgc and want to upgrade to fac because of huge increases in fox and deer but won't apply in case it brings attention to themselves and they come for their sgc i mean i can understand that a little bit but the the FAC is is no in terms of suitability your, your suitability um, checks. The FAC is no different to the FSGC. Okay, you have an extra reference. You have to get two referees rather than um, rather than the one. Uh, but yeah, you still it's still the same bar. Uh, so you know if they've got concerns about that they're going to be coming for it eventually because they're going to have to renew the sgc so i would say to them if they really are well if you, if they genuinely believe them okay i i get what you're saying like they they don't believe they are unsuitable they 
they think the police are gonna sort of um overreact or you know they're, they're going to declare them unsuitable when they when they actually are but if they're really worried about drawing attention to themselves just wait until the renewal right they're going to have to go through that process anyway so they're not drawing attention to themselves unwarrantedly because they're going to have to go through it so just tell them to wait until they come come for their sgc renewal and upgrade it to a core terminus that shouldn't be that shouldn't be an issue at all like the, there's very little to lose then and a lot lot to gain um because yeah if they're going to say no to an fac they're probably going to be taking away the sgc um anyway or you, you know what i mean timber wasn't there a statistic that said that more than 90 percent of firearms related crime happens in gum free zones areas um i mean that's very U us I, I tend to focus more on uk statistics um lunch from the range oh i mean once we're in kentucky well i don't know well i do have i do have wi-fi i do have 4g so i don't know what the internet's going to be like at the range though but what i could do is schedule during the travel to be at a range with wi-fi hmm we'll see we see it, it sounds like a logistical fucking nightmare but we will um i'll try and work something out but yeah lunch lunch from the range um i can definitely try and do that during the week in kentucky that would be awesome uh have you come across any articles or new invents marrying ai to shooting sports or is red dot as good as it gets um what well, i don't know what you mean oh do you, like you mean like an auto aiming scope there are some systems out there if that's what you mean um i know that magpul they they released it at a shot show didn't they they had a system i don't know if it's necessarily ai but it wasn't like an auto ballistics calculator that could like a you know it would make adjustments on the fly for you and sort of give you pretty much where you need to, to aim and then there was that gun a number of years ago actually that did the sort of same thing but when one it went one step further and would only let you release the trigger or, or fire the gun once you were on target so it was like it knew where you had to be aiming the gun you're know, given the wind speed and the elevation and distance and obviously the ballistic um sort of coefficient well not coefficient of the but the um the ballistic uh, stats of the of the bullet um and and it knew you know with all of these factors where that bullet was going to end up depending on where you aimed it so it would go right you need to aim here and you would like you'd get the gun in the rough position you'd pull the trigger and then it would own you know and as soon as you were like pretty much bang on where you needed to be aim it it would then go off um incredible incredibly smart bit of kit uh but yeah yeah i i i don't know in terms of um ai uh, darpa also created bullets that can change their directory that is that is pretty that is pretty swish uh but anyway on that note before you guys all head off again hit that like button hit the subscribe button there's gonna be a shitload of content and uh live streams over the next few weeks uh but yes things are gonna be a bit topsy-turvy but i'm gonna come back with probably more footage and videos than i know what to do with and that's probably the next year done of, of just us stuff uh but but yeah i am gonna head off there but make sure you like um and subscribe again makes a huge difference to the channel it helps us grow it helps us reach new people and if if nothing else it puts a smile on my face uh, but yeah i hope you've uh, enjoyed the live stream apologies again that it's on a saturday not a thursday and again apologize for any interruptions in the week uh, going forward but i hope you all have a fantastic week again i'm going to try and get as much stuff out on facebook and instagram go and follow us on on there over the coming weeks and 
you know, I'll, I'll eat some buffalo wings for you guys and I'll shoot some full autos for you guys as well. Don't think I won't be thinking of you with a massive smile on my face when I'm letting rip with that fun switch. Uh, but yeah, I hope to see you. Um, I nearly, I nearly did it out of line. Nearly. Anyway, I really hope. <laughs> I really hope that um, we can do some live streams while, while we're away. Uh, but I hope you can understand if there's, again, a bit more interruption. But all ha I hope you all have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you again for joining. I hope you've enjoyed it. And, of course, as always, I hope to see you soon.